Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on Java Spring programs. First, I will talk about some basics of strings and then I will take you through some important programs on strings. As I have told, first let's understand what are strings in Java. String is a sequence of characters, but in Java, a string is an object that represents a sequence of characters. Basically, string can be created by two methods, that is by string literal and by using a new keyword. Now as you know what are strings, let's begin with some important programs on strings. First one, problem statement for the first program goes like this. It says, write a program in Java to reverse only the words of a string. Suppose you have a statement like welcome to Edureka. In this, you just have to reverse the words, but the sentence should remain the same. Let's see how to do this. Let's take a look at the code. In this program, first I have declared the string in which I want to reverse the words. That is, welcome to Eureka. Next, I have used split function to split the words based on the space present in the newly created string array object. And next, I am using for each loop to store the elements present in string array to a temporary variable. Now, when I print this temp variable, Welcome to Edureka will be displayed because whatever is present in the string array is stored into the temp variable. Now let's see how to reverse the words in a string with the help of the below for loop. That is this one. So here i is less than 3 because array starts from a of 0, a of 1 and a of 2. And in our case we have 3 words. So that is why I have kept condition from i is equal to 0 to 3. And here I am storing the elements present in the string array to a new character array and reversing it with the help of this for loop. That is, j is equal to s1, that is the newly created array, dot length minus 1, and if j is greater than 0, and decrement the j. And now finally I am printing this. So let's run the code and check for the output. As you can see, first it displayed the elements present in the temp and then displayed the elements which we have reversed. Correct? So this is how it works. Now let's see the next program. Problem statement is, write a program in Java to concatenate two or more strings without using library function. That is, you have to concatenate or join two strings without the use of library function concat. Let's see how to do that. Here, you have to concatenate or join two strings without the use of string concat library function. Let's see how to do that with the help of a code. First, I have used a scanner class to read the input and display it. And next, I am joining both the strings by writing them like this in the print statement. That is, enter the first string and read it. And again, I am reading the second string. And next, I am concatenating both the strings by writing them in this print statement like this. That is, the first string and the second string. On doing this, you can check the output that both the strings are concatenated. So first I'll enter the first string like say welcome. And second string will be Edureka. So the result after concatenation will be first string plus second string. Sounds much simple, right? So that's how it works. Now let's see the next program. Problem statement goes like this. It says to write a program in Java to count the frequency of each letter in the string. In this program, you have to check the frequency of the characters present in the given string. So, for example, you have a statement, have a nice day, and it has to display the frequency accordingly that the occurrence of A is 3, C is 1, D1, one, H1, one, and so on. Let's take a look at the code to understand its working. So, first I have created a variable of string and use scanner class to read the input. And I'm initializing the count and length variables to zero. And here I have used try method to identify the count of the characters present in the given string. So this statement implies that it converts the string to a new character array. And now in this for loop, I have used the if condition to compare each letter based on the ASCII value and then increment its count. That is, it will check that name of zero is equal to name of j first and if name of 0 is greater than the ASCII value 65 and less than 91, and also if name of 0 is greater than 97 and less than 123, then it has to increment the count. And if count is not equal to 0, it prints all the repeated characters. And string replace is used to replace the substring with the match string and retrieve the frequency of the repeated characters. 
and inside the catch I'm just trying to catch an exception simple. Let's run the program and check for the output So I'll enter the same statement that is have a nice day So you can see here that it has printed the frequency of all the characters present in the string simple so this is how you can count the frequency of characters present in the given string. Now let's move further and understand the next program. Problem statement is write a program in Java to capitalize first letter of each word present in the string. So in this example, we have to capitalize the first letter that is separated by a space like this. Let's see how to do that with the help of a code. So first what I'm doing is I'm trying to read the statement using the scanner class. And then this statement is for the new line which is generated after conversion that is from uppercase. And here I'm using a uppercase plus is equal to character dot to uppercase. That is, I have to capitalize the word to uppercase which is present at carrot zero. And followed by a substring of one that is separated by space. And then it will print the original statement. And then it will print the sentence after conversion and trim method is used to trim the extra spaces simple Let's run the program and check for the output So I'll give the same statement Have a nice day So original sentence will remain the same and the sentence after conversion will be like this that is it will capitalize the first letters and the word that is separated by a space simple so that's how it works. Let's see what's the next program. It says to write a program in Java to remove the occurrences of a specified letter or a character. So in the given statement, say I want to remove the specified character E. How will I do that? Let's see that with the help of a code. I have used remove char method and passed parameters as string S and char C. And I have initialized the count to zero. And here I'm creating a new character array for string and initializing the variables of i and j to 0 and counting the length from i is equal to 0 and j is equal to 0 to less than n. And if the variable present in this, that is in this character array, is not equal to c, then I have to increment the count of j and assign it to t of i, else I have to increment the count. And while count is greater than 0, you have to make sure that it's not a null character. If in case it is a null character, it has to decrement the count else print T that is whatever the character you want to remove. And now here it's asking to enter the statement and that is the reason I have used a scanner class to read the input and then enter the letter that you want to remove and it will remove the character that is present at this that will be the one which you want to remove. And finally, I'm calling the function string. That is str and the character will be L because it will remove the character that is present in this location. So remove char method comprised of string s and char c and my char c will be L. That is this one. Simple. Let's run the program and check for the output. So I'll enter like say welcome to Edureka. And I want to remove E. So you can see here it displayed the output. And it removed the specified character E from the given string. Simple. Now let's see the next program on the list. So here the problem statement goes like this Write a program in Java to count the frequency of each vowel present in the string. So in this particular statement, I have to count the vowel's frequency, that is, occurrences of a vowel in the given statement. Let's see how to do that with the help of the code. So first I'll read the statement and I've initialized all the vowels count to zero. Next I will convert them to lowercase if any uppercase letters are present and now inside the for loop I will go on checking the condition for every vowel and increment the count like if character is equal to a and e i o u I'll give pre increment for that because it has to count the occurrences of this particular Vowel in the given string and that's why I'm going on incrementing it and finally I will display the vowel frequency in this format Now let's run the program and check the output I'll enter the statement like So you can see here vowel frequency is being displayed simple Let's see the next program Write a program in Java to check whether the given string is palindrome or not 
So here I have to check whether the given string that is race car is palindrome or not implies even when I reverse this particular string it will be race car itself. You can see that. Let's now understand the code logic behind this palindrome. First I have set the boolean result to true and int length will be always equal to input dot length and inside the for loop I will divide the length of the string by 2 and check if the divided half matches or not. Based on that we can decide whether the given string is palindrome or not. And now inside the if condition if the character that is present at i is not equal to the character that is present at length minus i minus 1 then it says the result is not true. That is it is not a palindrome. If it is true it will display the result as palindrome. And now finally I am calling the check palindrome function that is this one and passing the input string because this is my input which will retrieve the result. So let's run the program and see the output. It's true because race car is a palindrome. Again when I execute and give statement like hello it says it's false because it is not a palindrome. So this is how you can check whether the given string is palindrome or not. Let's see the next program. So here I have to write a program in Java to check if the given string is anagram or not. So what are anagrams? An anagram is a word or phrase formed by rearranging the letters of a different word or phrase typically using all the original letters exactly once. That is when you have a word called listen out of that by using all the words just once you can make another word like silent correct. So let's see how to do that with the help of a code. So here I have used check anagram function. I am passing string one and string two as parameters and if length of string one is not equal to length of string two then it has to return false. Why because the length of the two strings should always be the same. Next I am creating an object to character array for both the strings and using arrays or sort method to sort both the arrays and then I'm creating a object of the sorted string arrays that is sorted string one and sorted string two and now if sorted string one is equal to sorted string two then it will return true else it returns false. So basically I'll enter the first string and inside the if condition I'll call my check anagram function and pass the parameters. After sorting if both the strings matches then it returns strings are anagram else it says strings are not anagram. Let's run the program. So my first string will be listen and my second string will be silent. So it says strings are anagram. Now again if I give something different like mad and damn. Yes they are anagram and if I give Hello and so see all the letters inside the string should be used once only then it says the strings are anagram else it displays strings are not anagram simple. Let's move further and understand the ninth program on the list. The question here is to write a program in Java to swap two strings without using a third variable that is for example say without using temp variable. So I have two strings like hello everyone and welcome to Dereka learning. When I swap both the strings should be swapped like this. Let's understand the code logic behind this. So it's very simple first I will read the first string and then I will read the second string. Then what I will do I'll print the strings before swapping. Store the value of string one plus string two in string one and inside the string two I'm passing the variables that is beginning index and ending index. So the ending index should be length of a string one minus length of string two and substring is used to return the string that is a substring of this particular string. And finally I am using substring and just specifying the beginning index. Okay on doing that the strings will be swapped and this statement is used to print the statement after swap that is after string one and string two so that both the strings will be swapped. Let's check the output. So I'll give hello everyone. Welcome to Edureka. So before swap the statement is hello everyone welcome to Edureka 
and after swap it is welcome to Edureka. Hello everyone. So this is how it works. Let's now understand the last program. So write a program in Java to prove a string is immutable. That is we have to check whether the two given strings are immutable or not. So what do you mean by immutable strings? String is immutable means you cannot change the object itself, but you can't change the reference to object. Okay, so when you execute a particular statement, you're actually changing the reference to a new object, but in actual it will remain the same. So when you say string one and string two, the value present in string one will remain the same, but when you change the reference to object of string 2, this will change and this will not contain the value that is welcome to Eureka learning, but it will take the reference of string 1. So that's what you mean by immutable. Let's see with the help of code. So you can see here, first I have given the value of S1 as Eureka. That is, the Java string is created in pool and reference is assigned to S1. And now what I am doing, I am assigning the value of string 2 is equal to string 1. So S2 is also having the same reference to Java in the pool. Next what I'm doing, I'm trying to check if S1 is equal to S2. That is prove that S1 and S2 have the same reference. And now I'm overriding the value of S1 and giving it as learning. That is from Edureka, I changed it to learning. So how can you say that string is immutable? Well, in the above case, new string got created in the pool. Now S1 is referring to a new string in the pool, but the original string Java is still unchanged and remains in the pool, but S2 is still referring to the original string Java in the pool. So now what I'm doing, I'm again using the statement that is S1 is equal to S2, but here I have changed the value of S1. So what do you think? S2 value remains the same like before or will it take the new value of S1? Any guesses? It will obviously take the changed reference value of S1. Okay. So when I print S2, let's check the output. So first is returning as true. That is S1 is equal to S2. Yes. And again, when the value got changed, it is printing as false. Why? Because it does not match. And now when I print S2, it will print Edureka because S2 is having the same reference to Java in the pool. But if I print S1, it will print the value as learning because the S1 string got changed over here. But S2 will always point or have the same reference to Java in the pool. That is, S2 value will not change. But when you print or override S1, it will obviously get changed. That's what immutable strings are. So that was all about the Java string programs. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any queries, you can comment in the comment section below and we will revert back to you at the earliest. So thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!